All right, so this is a Fostec light. Um, it's made of light because the way everything is cut and the materials they use is to make it to as light as possible. Mm -hmm. if you want to feel that? Oh my God, that is light. YouTube, YouTube, man, we is at the gun zone. Hey, I told y'all, I'm searching for the Galil Ace Chamberlain 762 by 7.62x39, which is an AK variant. That is the pistol that I'm looking for. Yes, indeed. So, I'm hitting every gun store in the city, man, until I find that thing. Let's go in the gun zone and see what they got, man. So this is a Fostec light. Um, it's made of light because the way everything is cut and the materials they use is to make it to as light as possible. Mm -hmm. If you want to feel that. Oh my God, that is light. So your exposed buffer tube literally serves no function other than it reduces the weight cutting those grooves out. Okay. So you can't put a, a different uh, brace on her? No, you could. You could? Okay. Not on this one. You'd have to change out this buffer tube completely. Oh, okay. Yeah, this one's not going to receive anything. Okay. Night, Holly. Okay, and it does have the binary trigger in it. It does. So every time you pull the trigger, it'll shoot, and every time you let it go, it'll shoot. So where does it does it have like the mode on the other side, or or it's just on, automatic? On this one, it's just a, a straight trigger. Okay. Now there's a model that has a little adjuster underneath. Mm -hmm. This one just isn't that model. So oh, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna hop on the That's thorough, man. Okay. Right. Now what'd you say, boss? I've never tried it. Mm -hmm. um, 
but you may be able to put a silhouette and folding brace on it. Okay. So there wouldn't be an arm brace. It would still look like this, but you would be able to fold it up for storage. Okay, so that's, that's my main thing. I want to be able to fold it up for storage. In that attachment, you can put on any AR pistol. Okay, but you do have three of these, though. Right. Okay. Fort Worth. Okay. Oh, the guns. Okay. Yeah, we, send, we send all the good stuff to the gun show. Smart. So um, we, we haven't done one in almost three months now. So. Right, yeah, I didn't see y'all the last one. So, can I put my name down for the Draco just in case it don't sell? Which it probably is. That y'all have. So y'all have the micro, or uh, the mini. We have the mini. The mini. Okay. The micro we haven't had in in probably about four months. About four months. Okay. And so you have it, cause you know they got the the Gen Two Galil Ace that just dropped right like yes, a sir. week ago. Uh, do y'all think that y'all might be be receiving that? We do already have a waiting list on it. I don't know how many people are on it. Let me get on that I, list. I can pretty much guarantee you we'll get them. I need I need to be on that list, brother. Um, Let me go pull it out the back. Yes, sir. And I think I might. I'm gonna come back and get that one though. Since y'all, yeah. Since y'all got three of them, y'all ain't gotta be in a rush <laughs> to get it. I strongly doubt that they will all sell at the gun show. Okay. Just because it is a higher cost gun. It is, but it's a, a lot. A lot of people don't know about the binary trigger though, and their company too. Well, a lot of people are also afraid to get the binary trigger in case they're out. Uh, that's why you should want to get it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But y'all see, man, they got the the Trumpsters in this thing, man. Oh, that thing in there is hard. The grips. Oh, my mentor. Let me put my name on this list real quick, y'all. Is that a good one? So it's a single barrel, mm. but it's two magazines, so it holds 14 rounds. Right. And it's still in that pull that bullpup design. So if you're using, if you're looking for a shotgun for home defense, mm. it's going to be a lot easier to get through doors and hallways with something that small and tight to your body. Right. Um, also, you never know. If you did home and have a home invader and they were laying in wait for you to kind of come around the corner, mm -hmm. when you're fighting over something smaller and you've already established the dominant grip, mm -hmm. it's a whole lot easier the smaller the weapon is to maintain control of that weapon. Whereas if it's something long, even if you have a dominant grip, say something full size like this, right? If I grab it here, if you're holding it like you're supposed to, but I grab it here and get a hand on here. Now I've got all the leverage. Right. So you might be controlling the trigger, but I'm controlling the gun. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. And eventually, you know, that finger that you've got on the trigger is going to get tired. Right. And you'll start to lose your grip. That gives me an advantage of getting that gun away from you and possibly using it. Right. So when we talk home to fit shotguns, the goal is always to get as small as you can handle. Yeah, and I, I don't like the big ones, so I guess that's why I'm, I lean towards the, those anyway. I don't like the big ones. Um, you know, like in the same breath, I know everybody loves these Talon Grip shotguns. Mm -hmm. um, I've got one around here somewhere. Um, you have nothing to hold on to. Right. I know it looks cool and it looks intimidating, but we don't need guns that are intimidating. Scary Facts. people doesn't keep you safe. Facts, I agree. If someone comes into the house and you feel like you're underneath that kind of threat, the goal is to drop them as fast as possible and be done. Right. Um, so when you have something like this, or like I have three kids, mm -hmm. I can't afford to have a non-accurate shot that might go through a wall and hit one of my kids. Right. So something like this, you cannot aim this thing. You can't put it up here. Right. The recoil is going to put it right into your collarbone, bust your collarbone. Right. And now you got a dead arm trying to fight for your Trying face. to fight, yeah. Looks super cool. It does. I know there are, you know, the tough guys that'll try to one-hand it. Yeah, it's, that's a lot of recoil, though. That's a lot of recoil. Just because you can shoot it off once doesn't mean the fight's done. Like right. You've got someone driving. Yeah. You know, brothers in the getaway car. So that wouldn't. So that wouldn't be a good one to have. That's more for like, basically, the cool factor. That's just a point. That's just to be like, look at, look at my battery. Okay, I got you. I got you. So on the opposite end of the spectrum. And there's not a whole lot of difference other than the grip. You have mm -hmm. the pistol grip. Push, 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 push. Still small, much more ergonomic design. Right. Because you can still make your arm into a straight line that takes on that recoil. Right. But also because of the length of the overall length of the shotgun barrel, you can actually put a stock on here if you wanted to. Oh, okay. So you couldn't put one on that one though. You couldn't put one on that one. Okay. Okay. Because then you'd be making it into an SBR. SBR. Now, oh, I got a question. So I was at shoot. I was at the shoot point blank in Arlington. They had a maximum defense PDX, 
And they said you had to get a, a, a tax stamp to use it. Was it in 308? It was in 762 by 39. Okay. Um, so they have a lot of different mount. Like here in the store, we don't order anything in that you need a tax stamp to buy. Right, okay. It's too much of a hassle. It's extra paperwork. It's not worth it. Okay. Um, but if you look at like the modern pistol brace mm -hmm. that they have out now, they might as well be stocks. Yeah, basically. And there's not going to be... Especially on the Daniel defenses, like 300 blackouts, high as stands and not... Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, looking at that, there's not going to be when you're trying to, uh, you know, a cop that's going to pop out of your closet and be like, nope, your belt's going to be Yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, and then even if they just did, uh, did decide to push the issue, did you shoulder that weapon? Right, right, right. No. So, y'all, so you can get one of those, though? Uh, as long as it doesn't have a stock installed on it. If you get the maximum dispense that's got the stock on the back, the full stock, mm. you would have, that would be an SBR. So that's guess, that's, I guess that's what they were saying, yeah. Okay. Now, there's a lot of gun stores that will take that stuff in. We just don't do it. Right. It's, it's too easy for our customers to get in trouble. Gun laws are, just, are confusing enough for us, and we do it for a living. Mm -hmm. So any of that stuff that can end up complicating your life, we just stay away from it. Now, let me ask you something. Y'all do all, all, all for custom work, too, right? Right. Okay, because the uh, once just wanted to let the folks know, like if they wanted to get some customized, y'all do offer that also. So yeah, we do uh, serif coating, custom engraving, um, pretty much anything that we can put into a file, mm -hmm. we can do with the laser engraver. Okay. Um, but we also do stuff like make custom barrels. Uh, really. We fully restore classic firearms from all the way. I think the oldest one I've seen coming to the store was from the 1400s, and the gunsmith brought it back. Fully wow! Restored. See, I got a couple, a couple of them that I want to bring to y'all. I just got a uh, the help up, mm -hmm. the, uh, the by Pioneer. Up. Yeah, I want to do some custom on that one. I haven't seen anybody really on YouTube do that uh, because that's why I want the Galil Ace because I'm gonna keep that one like it is. And the help up since it was cheaper, I'm gonna you know put a, I want to put a binary trigger and all that in it. I know we've had one that's come that's come through. It had an underfolding stock, mm -hmm. which. It's very cool looking stock, but it's also a functional stock. It's mm -hmm. not just there for looks. Mm -hmm. um, but they put a full quad rail on it with the underfolding stock. So wow. Um, and they set it up really professionally. They had their reflex sight on one side. They mm -hmm. had laser on the other. Flashlight underneath. With mm -hmm. That uh, the flashlight was built into the foregrip. Wow. Um, so really classy job. I normally don't like the the chop down uh, AKs. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more recoil to deal with. It is. It's just fun to shoot. <laughs> it's harder to aim, but in a platform like that, the way they had their set off set up, um, they had a binary trigger in it. Oh. And I just fired it in the range, way more accurate than I expected because mm -hmm. I could unfold that folding stock. So, so if I wanted to get that something like that done, get the folding stock, do y'all offer that? So there is stuff that you can order that we can't. Mm -hmm. Or we can order it, but the price because we're ordering it. It'll be a little markup. Right. Gets to the point where we'll just tell you, look, you're better off getting Order. it yourself. Okay. Um, but we would let you know that when you brought it in. Okay. Um, the gunsmiths don't do any work that you don't approve of. Right, right, right. Okay. So they're not just going to start tearing your stuff apart. Uh, mm -hmm. If you drop it off after they leave for the day, we'll take and call you before we do any work. So when are they usually here? Because I would like to bring it up here and like try to discuss what I, what is the vision that I got for it and what I'm looking to get out of it and like the parts that I want. When are they usually here? Monday through Friday, mm -hmm. um, 10 o'clock in the morning to 5.30 in the evening. Okay. Now our main gunsmith is on vacation for the next two weeks, but well, for the next, he's only got a week left. So after that, you're good to go. Okay. I think I'll wait for, is that the one uh, gunsmith 85? Oh, oh, yeah, that's him. I, I think I'll wait for him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's he does some bad he's work. Too, but he's learning. You're okay. Yeah, that's cool. kind of like you know the apprentice and the master kind of situation. Okay, it's always good to go straight to Ruby. So do, let me ask you some. Ruby's the one that did all these. Oh, he did. All, okay. Yeah. See that custom workout? That is nice. Man, for that, that's a great Especially price that, too. That Colt National match. Oh. Mm, mm, mm. They got some plans, say. Nice. I see, though, man. That's dope. Oh, yeah, all right, boss. I just uh, ordered, because you know they just released the uh, 15 round mags for the uh, Hellcats. I just ordered two of them things, man. Yeah, the shield arms? Yeah, no, the um, Springfield. 
actually released two of them. The Shield Arms made the mag, right? Did everybody rip them off? Yeah, they did. But, but, but why hasn't Glock done that yet? Because that would be a great time. This is a great time for Glock to capitalize on that because Shield Arms was on back order. Well, because Glock made a, a beautiful gun design, what, 40 years ago? Mm. And they never had to change it. True. This is a new world for them, you know. Uh, yeah. Sig beat them out on the military law. They did. <laughs> You've got a lot of law enforcement going to the Smith & Wesson M&P series. Mm -hmm. I've seen, and I've seen a lot of those, too. They have the safety, they have the larger trigger releases. Right, right. And they're cheaper. Right, you know, right, right. You know, these guys are buying their own sidearms. It costs a little less money, you got a lot of performance. Okay, okay. Because everybody else is continuously trying to up their game. Glock either goes bigger or smaller. True, true. The so mechanism I, doesn't change, the features don't change, it's just bigger or smaller. Right, so you, you think that... Well, I mean, technically they did copy seal norms and do that. Yeah, for that. That is smart though, because that's basically. So is the X the um uh, the Sig P three sixty five X is that about the same size as this one? Because I, I I at first I knew they had the regular uh sixty five, and then they had the XL. So now they got the X. I seen it over there. And so the XL's grip. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit longer. Um, Dimension-wise, the Hellcat cuts off a little bit sooner. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, my favorite is that new Shield Plus. Have you seen those? Yet? No, no. Let me see. Let's check it out. So is that her? They were the first to come to market with one of those with one of those double mags. Um, so your original Shield holds eight rounds. Mm -hmm. The Shield Plus is the same size. It holds thirteen. Oh, okay. Without increasing the size of the gun. That show sure did. So one last question, boss. If you had to choose a Daniel Defense pistol 300 blackout or that Frost Six, which one would you choose? Um, I'd honestly go with the Frost Tech, but it's not because Daniel Defense isn't great. Right. I would go with the Frost Tech because it's already got the binary built into it. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to spend, you know, 500 bucks on a binary trigger on top of spending you know, two grand and change. Right. And then spending another 500 on top of that. Right. That's exactly. Okay. Okay. So. Now, if Daniel Defense comes out with one at the same price. With, with a binary then, trigger. Then, then, then we can talk because that Foss Tech does have drawbacks because it is so lightweight. Okay. Well, we're going to go end this video, man. Tell them where we at. We're at the gun zone in Mesquite right off of I-30. Hey, man, I'm going to put I'm gonna put all of that description in the um, bio and all that. When y'all come here, make sure y'all tell them Safe Food Lonzo sent y'all here, man. Dope, dope gun store. You see how much knowledge they got. And they do custom work, gunsmith, and all that. Check them out, man. Like I said, I'm going to put everything in the description. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go back outside and end this video because I don't want to be too loud in their store. I'm going to tap right back in with y'all in just one second. Yes, indeed. Indeed, man. Y'all see? This is where we at. This is where we at. The gun zone, man. Comment down below, y'all. Should I... So I'm searching for the Galil. But that Frost Tech... I've been looking for that too, because it got that binary trigger in it. Should I go ahead and buy the Frost Tech, because I don't have a 300 blackout, and wait for the Galil to come in and get that too? I think that's what I'm going to do. I don't even know why I'm asking. I think that's really the smartest thing to do. But, uh, man, hey, guns on. Check them out. Hey, don't buy my damn gun. <laughs> don't buy what I'm trying to get, man. But, hey, man, we're going to end this video like we end every video. No fears, no regrets, just a future with a promise. 2021 and for the rest of your life, go in, do what you want to do, man. All my two-way brothers and sisters, protect yourself at all times. And this your boy, Safe Lonzo, a.k.a. the Black Bruce Banner. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, Pistol Packers, oh, I like to let them go.